How's it going guys? Um, we had some good questions from last week, so I'm gonna go over those first and then move forward a little bit with this if we have time. So the first question was about miles and de degrees. Um, the way we do it is, say this is your, your harbor and that's the head buoy and this is your boat out here. What we do is for, for us, um, every harbor that we fish out of we put a waypoint mark on this head buoy and then when you're out here you just select the waypoint so if this was why and i save that waypoint on your gps and then you go to your menu and you select navigate to why and I harbor so if you're out here and you needed to get back to Wai'anae Boat Harbor, the GPS should tell you, you got eight miles, and the, com you know, the degree that you need to head is 30 degrees to get back to the harbor. And that's how we exchange information as well. So we would probably say, um, you know, on your GPS, if you're driving back to Wai'anae, it would say 30 degrees to get back to Wai'anae, your boat is pointing 27 degrees or something like that, but this eight miles is the distance you need to go to get back to the harbor and the bearing you need to keep a compass at is 30 degrees. So that's how we, that's how most of the people that I know communicate as far as where the fish is. Um, some guys do it by landmarks, like on the thousand outside and on a coulee, but this is a way more accurate way of exchanging information with your network. So there's that. Hope that answered that question. <clears throat> the next question was about fish fishing apps and I do have that um, solar lunar app in my phone and try and look at it and you know it'll say one fish for junk fishing and three fish for excellent fishing or something like that a lot of times that kind of correlates with the with the moon phase um, and typically if I can plan it I would like to fish three to five days before the moon, the full order dark moon, and then again, two to four or five days afterwards. And every season it kind of varies between those two. And basically when the moon's around, there's more current. So um, the fish tend to feed more, but that's not always the case. Um, I know last year or the year before, I think it was last year um, a lot of the bites were coming right on you know the day after the full moon and because in my head I, I look at the calendar and it's like oh okay the full moon is on Saturday I can probably look to fish Monday or Tuesday and then find out Sunday the bite went off already so uh, the fish gonna bite when the fish wants to bite and it's super hard to predict so I'll give you an example um, most of my friends who fish for a living they just go fishing um, and they don't they don't try to predict it I guess as much as I try to do it that way whereas before I could fish a lot more so I would kind of just go but you know as my fishing time has shrunken down now I'm trying to look and pick the best days but that that's still a crap shoot so I do my best and um, but I don't there's no like there's no magic day I guess if you try to do it by the moon phase or the solar lunar apps or whatever um, it, sometimes it does work awesome you pick you look oh yeah it's the the thing says I'm bite good today and you go out and 
it bites good but at the same time sometimes the thing says the thing don't bite good today and the thing don't bite and then a couple of days later is when it bites so um take that with a grain of salt and then one of the major questions was how to build a network um so i'm going to spend a little time on this subject for you guys okay when you're starting out um building a network is probably the, one of the hardest things you're gonna have to accomplish um to help to help your fishing adventures and there's a couple of ways to do it one one of the better ways to do it is join your local fishing club um i'm pretty sure i know on oahu there's a bunch of fishing clubs and i'm pretty sure wherever you are there's a fishing club and they get together once a month or something and i don't i don't know exactly what they do because i never joined one but i was in dive clubs before and you know they talk about regulations and and things to get involved in and stuff like that but it more more than anything it was a chance for people with common interests to get together and then you can meet some guys there and hopefully build your network um from there the other thing would be um what i noticed is a lot of guys have boats because we all want to be captains but a lot of guys struggle to find crews so if you have a chance to fish with someone who has some knowledge to share with you, take up the opportunity and go fishing with them. Like I started, when I started fishing with my friend Brent and he had asked me for like well over a year, hey, you know, come when you, when you get time, go come with me. But I, <clears throat> I never did cause we're all busy. But I finally decided, like, look, this guy knows how to do it. Um, I should go and I should learn. So I went with him. And then also, there was other guys fishing with him that also had boats that I met and fished with them. And we built a relationship. And then they also became part of my network. And then over time, you know, that slowly just spread and spread and spread. Um, I'll give you a another real good example of um one like nowadays i always call jr and i was it i played baseball with him when we were younger but we grew up and i never knew that each other fished and then when we relinked um touch bases again i seen him at a tournament and i found out oh he's a captain now so i got his information and then um you know rekindled that friendship and also he became a part of my network so just keep in keep i guess keep an eye out for opportunities to build and increase your fishing um network yeah so um look to go fish your guys look to help guys out um even if it's outside of fishing i don't know somebody might need one part for their boat or when borrow and pour and reel that these are all kinds of things that i've done and that you know help build a relationship with someone and then down the line we started to exchange information so that's some of the do's which is pretty simple it's pretty common sense um some of the key don'ts that i i kind of want to touch bases with you guys and again especially if you're pretty new to fishing um, and you start to build this network. So one of the main things I think that has helped me build my network is to not have an expectation. And by that, I mean, if I call someone and they don't get back to me, um, I don't hold it personal. Cause again, we, we all busy. So, if they don't answer or they say they don't know then you know then that that's fine um i'll, I'll go to the next guy uh, I, I give you a kind of a scenario where like i give lures to people that um you know that ask their friends and whatnot and 
and then I call him and you know hey I heard you caught some fish whatever whatever or I call him because I, I saw that they caught some fish and they don't call me back and I don't like hold a check mark against them because they never call me back the next time. Next time come around again, I just call them again. And then if over time, um, that's a pattern, then I just, you know, I just kind of weed them out of my network. Um, and it's kind of, I guess, hmm, how should I put, it's kind of easy to, like, if I see um, one of my friends, they caught five ahis, let's say, I found out, oh, crew caught, you know, go call crew, crew, crew caught five. But, so, you know, I call him up or I text him and he don't answer. And, you know, maybe I text him a couple hours later and he don't answer. Um, and you think like, oh, ah, you know, like call me back. But the sometimes the reality of it is, because if you're on the flip side of that, let's say, you know, there's a day um, where we do really well um, what you got to remember is like for instance let's say if I did really well and I try my very best to text the guys who are um, looking for information or you know call them or whatever but you just the guy who did really well just spent the whole day on the water he got to come back he got to take care of the fish he got to drop the fish off at the auction if he's a commercial guy or a guy that's going again tomorrow, he got to get the boat ready for the next day. He's still got to get home, take care of his family, um, and all of those responsibilities as well. So, again, everybody's busy. So, I just, like, a lot of times I'll text these days. I'll text and be like, hey, I'm going tomorrow. You know, let me know what's up if you got time. And, you know, that could be at 4 o'clock. And... And then I call everybody else and get whatever information I can. When I'm heading out in the morning, the next morning, a lot of times that's when they'll text me back and say, and it's a pretty typical response. Hey, sorry, man, I was super busy. Um, this is the information that I got. And sometimes it's not, you know, it's, if they're a good friend, they'll call you later and just be like, oh, sorry, man, and you know, I was busy. So don't, don't be the type of person who's like, ah, that guy, he never called me back. I, you know, screw him or whatever. Like, most people don't intend to um, not call you back, I guess, or hide information from you. It's just everybody got a lot going on. So um, that, that's one of that's one of the main things when you're of not to do when you're trying to build a, a good fishing network is don't have any expectations. Share, I share as much as I can. And then I'd also, if they, whatever reason, don't share, then I don't hold a grudge against them. Um, and then again, if over time that's a repetition, then I know, okay, that, that guy's not really part of my fishing network. We're still friends and whatever, whatever, but when it comes time for me for call for information, I'm not gonna bother calling that guy. So again, that's one of the main things you gotta, because if you, <clears throat> if you ask for information and then the guy doesn't give it to you and then you let your ego get all big and you be like, ah, oh, screw that guy, fucking, you know, you know, like, call me back. Then that's all the rest of the times where you could have just, you know, still sent him a text and, you know, or a call and he, he wasn't that busy, he did call you back. That's all those points that you miss if you just blow him off because couple of times he never get back to you so I, you know again I just ask for information without expecting it if if it comes cool if it's not I'll find it out from somebody else eventually so okay so the final question was what do you do if your zone A and your zone B are both completely dead um, and that's a that's a pretty good question for if you're if you're just starting out um, So let's say you go to zone A and you don't see anybody hooked up or maybe only one guy. You don't see birds, you don't see bait. Um, you know, you come out, you work this zone for a couple hours and then it doesn't look good. You decide that it doesn't look good. Now you go to zone B and you do the same thing. 
and you decide the same thing, right? It, it doesn't look good to, in both of those places. Um, what I what I don't do is now, ah oh shit, A and B is, is no good. Let me go look around. Um, I try and spend as much time when I'm, because this is all travel time, these, this, all of this out here. What I try to do is spend as much time as I can fishing. So even when I come out in the morning, I'll run till I'm like a mile from the zone and then set up my lines and then fish here. I'll throw from here to here because I'm already set up, but um, I try to spend as much time fishing and I consider all of this time not fishing, traveling. So if I'm out in zone B and it looks like zone B is dead, most times what I do is I, I put the cursor back on Wine or Harbor and I just come straight in. Um, there's something to be said for saving the fuel, saving the body, saving the time for another day. If I see something as I'm, you know, I got my eyes peeled all the way back. If I see something worth taking a look at, I will definitely do that. But if it doesn't look good, some days the fish just don't bite. And no matter how long, I can't tell you how many days we stayed out until the sun went down and it was just a slow day. Um, you can squeak out a fish or two um, doing that, but again, if if you're playing the odds, that's probably that's a, probably what the better thing to do is to save the fuel, save your energy for another day. Um, which which makes me think of a different scenario. Also, if you're fishing out here. A lot of newer guys, and I, this, this was me before as well, you're in the zone and it looks good, it looks okay, or you don't know if it looks good or okay. Um, but let's just say you're fishing for, and it, you know, the whole morning and it's about one o'clock, two o'clock and you don't have a fish. And now you start to think like, oh, Maybe I should go run the ledge for Ono's just so we can catch something. So you pull out of the hot, the, the zone and you drive back down onto the ledge and you go look for Ono's. <clears throat> and maybe you catch an Ono or maybe you, do, or maybe you don't. What I, what I came up with over time is if I just stay in this zone through all the time that I'm trying to salvage my day for an Ono. There's no, there's no saying that I'm gonna catch an Ono versus I'm gonna catch an Ahi. I might also stay out there until my time runs out and try for the Ahi. Because if I come in to the shallows where we fish anyway, um, there's no chance I'm gonna catch an ahi. I, I, I haven't caught, I know guys have, but I haven't personally caught an ahi on the 40 yet. So I, I don't bail for the inside in hopes of catching, in hopes of scraping off an ono. I just stay and play the game until the game is done. So just stay out there in the deep water until you run out of time and if you, for me, if I run out of time, I never catch an um, ahi, then I just come in. The, 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 what's gonna happen over time is, you're gonna do this, you're gonna come in over here and you're gonna go for an ono and you're not gonna catch an ahi and you're not gonna catch an ono. And you, you know, you could have invested this time here out over here, so if you, if you're really focused on catching an ahi, stay out in your zone as long as you can, and then when your time is up, just come in. And if you didn't catch one, chalk it up for the for the next time. Um, staying here over, you know, all the times you fish versus doing this is this is a better plan. Um, if you're if you're one of those people who wanna, you know 
you, you want to catch something, then like trolling is not the best, um, the, the most efficient way to catch fish. So, you know, go catch a pedal or go shallow water bottom or something if you want to take something home for dinner. Um, but again, if your focus is catching your first ahi or being more consistent at catching ahis, then you gotta stay in the deep and you gotta stay in the zone. So, so I think that's all we have time for um, for today's talk, and we'll get more into it again hopefully next week. Have a good one, guys. Yeah.